always loved coming back home to Ukraine. It is a country where you would never feel like a stranger. I'm exceptionally fascinated by its nature, history and people. Sceneries here have absolutely everything, starting with the forbidding Carpathians and ending with lavishly vibrant yet gently warm Odessa. From majestic Kyiv to cosy Venezia, from European Lviv to poetic Kharkiv, each of these cities is enveloped in history, revealing dramatic events of constant confrontation and fight for freedom, of the brave nation, of unbreakable people. I had always thought that ordinary days are all too similar as they are continually mixing with each other, creating one huge mass of commonness. Things like strolling with friends, having breakfast with relatives, listening to the loud beeping of hectic cars on the streets, conversing for the sake of conversation with mates, nibbling on a piece of my favorite cake in a cafe in my home city, all of these rituals seemed everlasting. The previous day ended differently for everyone. The following morning started the same way for every person. That day I woke up about the usual time, but on that occasion it was the squeaky rustling coming from the window blinds that made me open my eyes. My dad was closing the windows in my room. I asked him why he was doing that and got an answer that it was necessary to ensure that I wouldn't get injured by sharp fragments of flying glass in case an explosion occurs. Bombs were heard going off in the morning. It saddens me to say that, but war started. After that, I didn't feel sleepy anymore. I felt numbness. To be honest, I was being torn by tangled emotions. It was a mix of fear, anxiety, and misunderstanding. Since then, my room hasn't seen daylight. Постійно боролися дві особистості. Я одночасно була мамою трьох дітей і заступником директора школи, яка мала виконувати свої обов'язки. Пізніше я поїхала до школи, і там були мої колеги. У всіх теж в очах читалася розгубленість, ніхто не знав, що робити далі. Ми вирішили відправляти всіх учнів додому, хто прийде до школи, дзвонити батькам, щоб вони сьогодні дітей до школи не вели. В цей ранок прийшли декілька дітей, і ми стали їх відправляти додому, дзвонити батькам, щоб їх забрали. І мені пам'ятається один дзвінок, коли я подзвонила тату від двох дівчаток і попросила його прийти забрати додому. Він мені сказав, що він не може цього зробити, оскільки його викликали терміново військомат. І він зараз вже пішов і... The 
day after, we woke up at 4am because an airstrike warning had been sounded. I must say that exactly at that moment, I got a realisation of the whole horror of the situation because we had to quickly pack the bare essentials and go down to the basement. This terrifying memory still feels like it had to have been a dream, a most vivid nightmare, one from which you want to wake up as soon as possible and continue living. I didn't sleep the whole night, anxiously checking the news every five minutes. The alarm sounded in my home city every two hours, so we spent quite a lot of time in a cold cellar where we had never expected to have to hide. Sitting underground, I knew that at that same moment, all over the country, fierce battles were raging, with rockets and bombs hitting Ukrainian cities and blood being shed every second. In order to protect themselves, their loved ones and pets, people were hiding in the deep underground stations in Kyiv and Kharkiv. <laughs> Meanwhile, the eastern part of the country was facing violent battles where schools, kindergartens and maternal houses were being shot. Every adult, pensioner and child during those first days experienced all vibrant shades of war. The sky was closed from planes, all the media were reporting scenes of fight. Martial law was imposed. Что в стране знаешь? Война. Война? А что такое война? Это убивать людей. А кто кого убивает? Если кто-то злой, если добрый кто-то, то не убивает. А если кто злой, то убивают. War. What a horrendous word. There is no naivety, nor romanticism left. Our country seems to be bound to plunge into the oblivion of warfare, needing numerous years, finances and efforts to flourish again. Our souls are involuntarily crystallised by the coldness and hate towards the enemy. We are starting from the fact that we are at home. So, we, like every Миролюбивое, любое свободное государство защищаем свою культуру, свою территорию и свои интересы. The enemy has brought us pain, separation and death. They wanted to strike fear into our hearts, but we've come to understand the importance of being strong and united. Irrespective of age, 
gender, income, irrespective of everything, everyone asks themselves one question. What can I do for victory? The whole nation united to defend the country from the onset. Long queues of men and women lined up at the military registration. People began to provide the citizens of the most affected regions with humanitarian aid. City communities united in territorial defence groups to protect their towns and villages. The whole world now admires the courage, bravery and valour of Ukrainians. In the Sume region, an ordinary woman fiercely argues with a Russian soldier who is holding a weapon. Meanwhile, in the southern part of Ukraine, despite the pressure and threats of killing, citizens are still mounting protests against the occupiers to proudly claim that the land the intruders have set their foot on has been, and will always remain, solely Ukrainian. Resisting, people are stopping tanks with their bare hands, not giving way to the enemy, saving each other from bombs and gunfire. We knew that the enemy is cruel and ruthless as they have already violated all possible norms and restrictions. They have come to destroy us. But the whole country answered. It is impossible to imagine what kind of cruel acts civilian people in the occupied territories have been suffering from. In Mariupol, a bomb was dropped on the building of the drama theatre, in the basement of which about a thousand people, including children, were hiding. Even despite the huge text on the ground which said, children, and as a result, about a third of people died. In Bucha, a town near Kyiv, almost the entire male population aged from 18 to 60 was killed. Teachers of schools and kindergartens also faced numerous tortures and then were brutally murdered. People with their hands tied and heads shot were found in underground basements of towns near the capital. Some citizens who went out in search of food or water died because they stepped on a mine. Explosives are still found on the doors, abandoned cars and toys. People's attempts to get out of this hell seem to have become a lottery as Russian soldiers shoot even peaceful civilian cars on site. Это рюкзак, который был на моём сыне. Его посекло минами, были осколки. 
сын был в осколках с ног до головы. Это рюкзак, который был на моей дочери. То есть здесь четко видны следы крови. Она получила осколочное ранение в висок. <смех> Старший сын Никита, 18 лет. Он учился на втором курсе на программиста в университете Шевченко. Дочь Алиса, 9 лет. Алиса, загадывай желание. С днем рождения тебя! В 10 вечера мне удалось дозвониться. Мы не то что прощались, но я попросил прощения за то, что я не с ними. За то, что так получилось, что я не смог их прикрыть, защитить. Но она не теряла оптимизм, сказала, мы прорвемся, не переживай, все будет хорошо. Это были последние слова. Я увидел первую запись в Твиттере в текстовом виде о том, что на Романовке был минометный обстрел и погибла семья. Затем еще минут через 20 появилась первая фотография. То есть первая фотография, вот эти вещи разбросанные на земле, тела моих детей. Ну и затем появилось первое видео с места событий, где уже было четко видно падение мины, смерть семьи и как бы этот страшный крик собаки. Я хочу, во-первых, чтобы видели во всем мире о том, что творится в Украине, о том, как подло здесь нас убивают, нас уничтожают как нацию. In the 21st century, there's a real genocide. Just because of the fact that Ukrainians want to live on their land, speak their language, have an independent future. This war has forced everyone to become very careful and cautious. It has forced some to grow up and has given them the strength to carry on no matter what life might throw at them in the time to come. Nonetheless, still others have given way to despair. Since the invasion, it has become apparent that war is now part of your existence. It is when days last for weeks and nights seem like years which makes you unable to fall asleep due to fear. It's when taking a shower, you're afraid to not hear warning about new explosions. It's when you can no longer differentiate between the sound of a real and a phantom noise in your head. Or is when you look at your exhausted, panicking parents and realize that no one deserves what they are going through right now. It's when you start appreciating every teeny second and when you prefer the safety of your friends and relatives over your own. War has put everything in its own place, having divided the world into black and white. Breakfasts with relatives have turned into long discussions of the latest news from war zones. The beeping of cars have been replaced by the eerie sounds of sirens, to which, unfortunately, you begin to get used to. Carefree chatting looks to be no longer existent as these days you more often find yourself in a situation where you are desperately trying to find the right words of support for a person who has lost everything. The word peace has acquired a more unique and special meaning. Everyone now just has one dream. Зачем шкодуєте найбільше? Все залишилося Тільки що не Все кольорові Бачу сне І 
Silicon Valley. Ruky brachni. Za tych nocy. Witkawy dnie. I didn't want to change my country, country to leave my country because uh, we have a happy family, happy life. And now our family is separated. Мы молода Украина с тысячелетней историей. Мы будуем свой дом на земле, где жили и будували наши предки. Я вдячный всем, кто 24-го года решил быть с Украиной. Слава Богу!